Disney loved bringing things to life. He pioneered the use of sound as a lifelike dimension to his cartoons. A certain number of beats, they would go ah, or they would go bang, or they would go this, or they would pop one of these pop guns, you know? He was one of the first filmmakers to put color on the screen. The flick of a Disney wrist brought life to an audio animatronic bird. Then when we play the tape back, he will do everything he's doing here. Through the art of animation, Disney brought imaginary worlds full of unforgettable characters to life. Come on, fly! Open the ears! And told stories that couldn't be told in any other way. Today, Walt Disney's animated film stories and characters have been translated into an entirely new art form, the animation sculptures of the Walt Disney Classics Collection. Centuries-old techniques for crafting porcelain figures have been styled to capture the greatest moments in Disney animation in all their warmth, humor, and color. Power! Me? <laughs> We'd like to show you how it's done. We think Walt would have loved the way we bring the characters to life in the new Walt Disney Classics Collection. We begin by choosing a memorable moment from a Disney film. We're always looking for that perfect instant. The task of identifying and selecting these moments falls to a team of people at Disney, which often includes artists from the feature animation department. It's very slick and very dimensional and, and almost draws itself, so I would definitely say this is a high in Donald's career. Well, this is almost a parody of Mutiny on the Bounty. Here they select an all-time performance by Donald Duck and discuss the qualities which made Donald the all-time duck. It reflects his personality and um, his attitudes every time he takes that hat and, and tips it. That's right. I'm a duck. We look at a scene frame by frame to find just the right pose for the sculpture. Back. Oh, where his mouth is... Oh, okay. that's it. Perfect. Is that okay? We can print that? Yep. I mean, here you've got the close-up look at it, and you can see. We want our animation sculptures to read. Walt's word for getting an idea clearly across. Thanks. Sure. Once the artists have agreed upon the perfect pose, we gather all the material necessary to research the pose, from the original animation drawings to talking with the person who drew the original animation. After answering every question about how to turn the animation three-dimensional, the animators return to the drawing boards to sketch angles, poses, and size relationships between characters. Their pencils never rest in the quest to unlock the magic. You shape a line, the way you, you draw the figures. They, uh, that, that contributes an awful lot to the depth and to the uh, overall effect that uh, you see today with the cartoon. Once a final pose has been fully researched, the sculptor begins his work. An important part of his job is to preserve what the animators call the line of action, the line which gives the drawing its feeling of movement. As the sculptor's work assumes a three-dimensional reality, you can see the animator's original ideas take shape in a new kind of space. center line of the head and the edge of the eye because if it comes in too far then he'll look angry as opposed to looking uh, aloof. Everyone takes a good hard look at the sculpture. Well, Dave could act it out. He could be your live action model again. <laughs> Do that expression. <laughs> The facial expression between the way the mouth and the eyebrow play off it. The principles of Disney animation are applied once more to ensure the character's believability and the full emotion of the moment. It's like he's 
confident from within, you know, and I don't want to lose that in this sculpture. Once a final sculpt is refined and approved, multiple exact copies are cast in resin in order to preserve the original. The resin copies allow the artist to compare and review the porcelain at various stages of production. We hand carry a set of resin duplicates halfway around the world to Bangkok, Thailand. Here in Bangkok, a tradition of exquisite craftsmanship has been passed from one generation to the next in a studio operated by master porcelain maker Eric Chan. Hopefully then we can go through these two little holes. Maybe I have to cut this part off and then reassemble it. In Thailand, the production process orchestrates like music as artists and their instruments perform to a timeless beat. The resin duplicates made by the Disney artists are cut and shaped into plaster molds for each piece of a character. To perfectly maintain the integrity of the original art, a single figure can be composed of over 30 individual pieces. Slip, a porcelain clay and liquid form, is custom formulated for the Walt Disney Classics collection, then poured into the plaster molds. The pieces are partially air dried, then removed from the molds. Here's the bottom jaw of the grinning crocodile from Peter Pan, and the delicate body of Bambi. The air-dried pieces, called greenware, are reassembled into the original figure using calibrating tools and other techniques developed specifically for the Disney animation sculptures. Artists also hand-finish each piece to add important textures and details and remove any traces of the molding process. These measures preserve the believability of the original animation. It's in the angle of Peter Pan's flying foot and the rakish tilt of Hook's hat. To get it wrong would be to lose the life of the sculpture, and the piece would then join thousands of rejects in the Greenware graveyard. The reassembled figure is allowed to air dry and then fired for the first time. This porcelain bisque is carefully covered with a translucent glaze then fired for a second time in a brick kiln. Producing a beautiful glazed whiteware. Next, a yellow dye is applied to the whiteware to detect any imperceptible flaws and the piece is fired again. When the quality of the porcelain is perfect, all it needs is color. Of color. Here in our paint lab is where the whole magic of color begins. Back in California in Disney's ink and paint department, artists call up the original animation color model sheets. They then remix these cell paint colors according to the original formulas and apply them directly onto the whiteware. Using these models as their guide, the porcelain makers in Thailand search for a way to achieve these original animation colors using ceramic paints. The use of color in ceramic art has never been so exacting as it is for the Disney animation sculptures. Centuries of know-how and craft go into the alchemy which accurately reproduces the rich hues of Disney animation in colors that will stand the test of time. And then the delicate process of painting the final figure begins. Because so many colors, textures, and finishes are combined on a single piece, the painting takes place in stages with a trip to the kiln at each stage. The Big Bad Wolf has a matte, a half matte, and shiny finishes, and 15 different paint colors. He goes to the house made of brick six times during the painting process. Disney artists continually review pieces in production to ensure that the animation sculptures preserve what the animators call the illusion of life. 
At Disney, it's called plussing. It's the last little touch we put into everything we make. In the Walt Disney Classics collection, you can see it in a crystal dewdrop, a blown glass soap bubble, in the glint of Hook's gold steel, or in the jaunty position of Mickey's pewter arms. It's in the special Disney insignia designed for each year of the collection, and in the back stamp which symbolizes the hard work, the history, and the creative magic which bring Disney's characters to life. The animation sculptures of the Walt Disney Classics Collection. But in our business, dreams have a way of coming true.